Hello, everybody. Welcome out to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Don Vassal. Today, the three of us are taking a look at uh, all three of the Spiel des Jahres nominees and all three of the Kenner Spiel des Jahres nominees mm -hmm. as well. So let's jump into that. So the, the Spiel des Jahres, Tom, and maybe you can speak a little bit more to this. This is probably this is the main. I don't know the the main. It's award. the biggest the game big award, award in yeah. the world. There's not even a close second to it. It right. was started thirty some years ago, maybe forty years ago, and they give it to the best game of the year. And that's kind of shifted a little bit, but it's now the Spiel des Jahres is the best family game. It's made for families. This is the game you should buy for Christmas for your family. And then the Kenner spiel is, oh, do you like games? Are you a gamer? Then that's the game to buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as with most things, we care a lot about German awards. Um, so <laughs> it's I, just kind I was of like, funny. Is that, that a joke? No, I have no idea. I don't know. It any is a big German deal, though. The games, that, the games that win this will sell more. They're guaranteed an expansion almost always. Even the ones nominated will sell better. Yeah, it's I think so. It's a big so. deal. People want to play these. Right. It, it's always been interesting to me that we care so much about this particular one. I think that it's earned its reputation. Yes. I really do think that it has. But it's one of those things that when you describe it to people, like, let me tell you, the, the German Game of the Year award, to a lay person, that sounds weird. It kind of sounds like when you learn that Michelin, the tire company, reviews restaurants, and, like, that's kind of a big deal. Like, that sounds odd off the tongue. But mm. it really is a prestigious award, and so we've played through all of these games, we figured, well, I mean, we're Let's in a position where we can talk about them. So, let's start off. Um, Wendy, do you want to introduce the top game Let's here? Let's begin with Next Station London right here. So this is a roll and write game, and the idea behind this is that you are building four different subways in London, and so cards are being flipped over, you're, you're drawing the lines that you need to draw and such. But the, I guess the gimmick in this is that there's four different colored pencils, and those are the four different subway routes. They all have a specific area that they start on your board. So even though people are drawing based on the same card flips, everyone starts in a different location because they have a different colored pencil, and at the end of each round, you switch pencils and you start on a different subway. This is a route building type of a game distilled down to just that. Yeah. I mean, that kind of seems to be like what, what it really is. I don't know. And it has four distinctive parts to it. It's four, right? Four colored pencils. Yeah, I think it's four yeah. colored pencils, yeah. Yeah, and then so it just feels... Like, I didn't do as well in that subway, so I'll do better on the next one. I think it, and it also gives a very satisfying finished product. They also get in each other's way, so you have to build your first ones well, otherwise, because you can't cross each other's tracks. Or I, there's, there's specific ways you can, but you, it has to line up right. I think that's what I like about this. I think this is a good nominee for the spiel because, unlike a lot of these route building type games, like, yes, you are not allowed to, if you draw this line, you can't go through a line, but you can go through and share the same stops. Mm -hmm. I love that because subways should do that. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's very multiplayer solitaire. I think that might be probably its biggest weakness for kind of a, a family game. I, Much roll and rights are that way. This is my favorite of the three. It's also the one that I would give 20 to 1 odds against it winning. Of the three here, the, yes. sp the Spiel mm -hmm. nominees. Yeah, I enjoy this one the most. If I were to pick one, if I were part of the you know 11-person council, jury, or whatever the, of the Spiel, this is the one I would pick. This is the one I would pick as well. I just I think for a roll and write game, it sticks out a little bit, and it's so hard to stick out in that genre. And I think it's because the trading pencils and the routes that have to work together, but get in each other's way as well. Yeah, I love the fact that we flip over triangle. All of us are drawing triangle, but purple lane starts somewhere else on the map. Yes. Red starts somewhere else. Green starts. Mm -hmm. I, it's just a, a small little psychological thing because if we were to all start in the same location and drew towards a triangle, then the next card is a square. There's something less satisfying about our maps looking a lot like each other's at the end of the game. And this one avoids that. Yep. Awesome. That's Next Station London. All right. Next up, this is a party game from Repos called Fun Facts. Fun Facts is, uh, it comes in the same box size. I think it's kind of the same line as like Just One, So Clover. Yes. And in this one, you, are, you reveal a, a card. This is a cooperative game, I should clarify. You reveal a prompt and a card that will say something. Like, um, uh, how, uh, how many times a day do you do something? How many times a day do you go fix your glasses on your face? And everybody writes a number on their own little uh, colored board here. 
you flip them upside down, and then starting with the person who read the prompt, you put your little, uh, your chevron. little chevron, uh, you put your little board there in the middle of the table, and the next person goes and tries to guess whether the number they wrote is above or below yours. The next person goes and has to figure, are they above, in between, or below? And you just keep going around. This one goes up to, I believe it's six players. It goes up to eight players, four to eight players. So it's going to be harder to try to get that exactly right, but you score points for how many are correct in increasing order uh, from bottom to top. We're seeing more party games, I think, being nominated for the spiel, right? It almost seems like there always is one. I'm a little surprised at this one. I wonder if the... I like it. I don't love it. I like it. I wonder if the pedigree, just one, and so Clover were so popular, has helped this. Because oh, it feels a little mean-ish, especially for the German audience, which don't tend to like mean games. Some of the questions are just not, like, how efficient are you? And <laughs> it doesn't matter what I write. Let's say I write 70% efficiency, and Chris, when I put mine out there, Chris is like, well, definitely higher than Tom. He means he's, I'm not very it's efficient. It's down-putting, right? It, it can be. Yeah. Now, it's not as cruel as other games are. No. Though some of these... Some of these questions are not super family friendly. I pulled out a little selection oh. for this exact reason. Someone came prepared. So there are normal questions like, on a scale of 1 to 100, how much do you like Disney movies? How superstitious are you? How many pairs of shoes do you own? How long does it take you to commute to work or school? I think those are really good questions. Those are like Tho factual. Those work very well for this game. Uh, questions that you might not be as comfortable answering, depending on the group. As you mentioned, this is the Family Game of the Year award. Okay, I'm going to shout out my answers. Okay. <clears throat> In general, how much cash do you carry with you? Hundreds of dollars. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> how old do you think you'll live to be? 35. How old am I? 46? 47. <laughs> <laughs> how seductive do you think you are? Oh, I pass. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and there's enough of these that I think... Um, how seductive? Yeah, on a scale like, of 0 to 100. You would have to take that card out for a kid. I, I think... That doesn't even make any sense. Yeah. Yes. Now, and that's... that's. I seldom think that the, the spiel jury w would be wrong, per se, but I think that there's enough moments in this game where there's awkward feelings where... I don't think this would work as well for a family setting. How I many think some of intimate the relationships have you had that have lasted longer than a year was, like, one? Yeah. Like, you know, enough that when we, I've played this, and and every time I've played it, a different person seems a little bit uncomfortable, uncomfortable with one of the questions or so. How many alcoholic drinks do you have per week? That might not be 38. something. That might not be stuff that you want to reveal. A week. And if you have a 14-year-old son, you might be like, your answer better be zero, son. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So, I think it's an odd one. Yeah, I, I agree that it's odd that there's some of those questions in there. But I get, I think I get what the what the Spiel Award is going for, that it is that kind of like light party game, it's interactive. My, kind, my problem with this, I, I think this game would be higher if the question pool was better. Hmm. I agree. It's also called Fun Facts. Okay, what would be the right. best question? Come up with a question right now. Well, like the that one you mentioned, the commute to work. I like that one a lot. Yeah. Because I sit there and go, well, obviously everyone knows I have the shortest commute to work. But who is far away, Chris or Roy? Or what do they think they live farther away to? And I like that concept. It feels like there's an answer. Like, even if you don't necessarily know the correct answer off the top of your head, you can estimate a better answer than, like, how creative are you? But I also like the ones that are, how much do you like cats on a scale from 0 to 100? That's fine, too, because you're just saying, well, I like cats more than Chris. No one's yeah. getting more annoyed by that. It's not a personality trait. Yeah. yeah. Just, so I think that's my only thing, and that's why I think it won't win. I, I agree. I don't think it'll win, but it is a fun game. I still like it, but I have my reservations because of some of those questions. Well, now we're looking at the winner. So Dorf Romantic, <laughs> <laughs> which incidentally is the one we like the least, or at least me and Chris. I don't know what you think about it. I thought it was pointless. Okay. Okay. So this is a cooperative tile laying game in which you're working together, you draw a tile, then everyone talks and you decide where to place it. You are trying to place and accomplish missions of sort, like I need six of these tiles put together, I need a group of four, that's mostly the game. And then as you, when you are finished with the game, you get a score. You do not win or lose, you simply get a score. That score will give you a certain amount of achievement points of sorts, and then once you get achievement points, You'll be able to open up envelopes, which will give you new ways to score, possibly new tiles, possibly new things. That's the game. It's just basically, let's, we always oh, scored 700. Well, let's, next game, let's try to score 750 or maybe 850. Woo-hoo. Like, they have really high scores on here. 
and I haven't played through the whole thing, and I don't even know how you would get to, they must offer enough scoring opportunities to do that. It's based on a mobile app that's very, very popular, and from what I understand, very similar. As you place things, you get the sense of achievement, and you're the romantic building my own little kingdom together. Um, and that's why I think it will win, because I think a lot of people, I think there's a lot of people who will like this who may not like almost any other game. I agree. In terms of family game, I think this is the most accessible of, of all three of the nominees. It's interesting because I feel like there's no, not no decision space, but there's very little decision space in this. Like, it's a cooperative game. You're all working together. You're building the city, right? But there's so many times you're like, there's one obvious place to put this. I'm going to put it in, like, the one obvious. Or there's two spaces. And so what are we going to do? Have a big discussion at the table to be like, ooh, which one of these completely random spaces are we, you know, the two are we going to pick? Well, it might just, just be a very cooperative game, though. I'm like, let's put it here. And everyone goes, yes. We're like, hey, communication. <laughs> I guess if you're playing with kids and the, I, don't, I don't know. I just I, don't see it. it. I will be surprised if this doesn't win. I would be surprised. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you in that. I just, I wonder... I think the things that I has, wonder about the nominate the nominations in general. I think I think the things that his this game has going forward are the are the unlocks and the potential to get even more points each game. Oh, I unlocked a mm. and I'm making up an example here. I unlocked a um, a, a tunnel and now when I ha when I pull up the other tunnel, you know, those two tunnel pieces, and I want to try and build a certain way. Now I want to move move a speedboat along the river. That was a cool unlock, and so some more of the decisions come from those unlocking things that you get, but it's still such a subtle game for me as a gamer that I, I, I didn't have fun with it. We played it with our seven-year-old daughter. Which it's not for the gamer gamers. This is the family. Yeah. Yeah. So. Like, even our seven-year-old daughter was like halfway through the game like, are we done yet? <laughs> I think overall, I think this is a weak nomination list and some... And, uh, and maybe that would be an interesting video to do, maybe on the side, like five games that should have been nominated. But again, I also don't know every game that's eligible because the game has to be published by a German publisher In that and year things like that. I also think one of the games we're about to talk about should have been nominated, but we'll get to that. All right. So let's. Uh, so th those are the three Spiel mm -hmm. nominees. We're jumping to the Kenner Spiel. Kenner Spiel. All right. The first one we have is Planet Unknown. Holy cow, this is heavy. So. This is also blocking me entirely. You all have seen it. I'm putting it down. Um, so in Planet Unknown, you are building up your little planet with these polyomino pieces, and you're trying to complete rows and columns. Um, and then you're moving up these tracks, and as you move up these tracks, you're gaining points, you're gaining new technologies, you're doing all this kind of stuff. Um, but the, the fun part of the game, or the interesting part of the game, is that there's this wheel of polyominoes. And as you move the wheel and you choose which polyominoes you're going to pick, the wheel then points to other people and they get to take a simultaneous action based on wherever you pointed them, essentially. Um, and so that's what makes the game really interesting is that level of interaction of, I'm gonna turn it, but also I might look at you and say, mm, I know you're going for this particular color. Let me, let me make a different choice slightly that'll still work for me, but will make it harder for you or something like that. When you play this one, how, how much are you letting other people affect your decision of, of rotating that lazy Susan? Or are you just grabbing the best Almost thing Almost never. If occasionally I might say, oh, you want something. Mm. And I'll move it. And I'll, but I'm picking what I want. Right. Yeah, you're mostly And what I want is more important. Um, but you get a choice regardless. You have a, a narrow choice when it's not your turn. But you're still picking between two tiles. Yeah. And you still decide where it goes. Yeah. So I never felt too constrained by that. This one was, uh, this is a cool game. I, I enjoy the polyomino stuff a lot. But also, I love tracks and being able to move up tracks and stuff. So, and some tracks let you move up on other tracks. <laughs> That's the best. I agree. I like this one a lot. Um, my only caveat is is that I think it is best when you play with the asymmetrical sides, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. much so. And I felt like small thing. And again, I love the game very much, but I felt like the asymmetrical factions are not particularly super balanced. And I also think the alternate boards, I'm not sure they're balanced at all, but it does offer a lot of fun, and I don't know that it matters in the long run. It was interesting, because yeah. we had set up the boards for Chris to play one particular faction with a particular planet, and the faction had one rover, and the planet had a line down the middle that said the rover can never cross this line. 
And so literally the rover could only be on one half of the planet if you put those particular ones together. Right. And I, I almost never play with the alternate planets. I usually play with the base planet, but then mm. switch up the factions. I think that the I think factions there's are enough. Very cool. I think there's enough asymmetry with that. Yeah. Yeah. Will I also you... think the real time is one of the reasons why this is so popular. Is being able to take a turn on somebody else's turn just feels good. There's so much less downtime. You mean simultaneous, not what did real I say? time. Real, not I'm real sorry, time. I'm sorry, simultaneous. <laughs> yeah. Done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think yeah. that's a I think it's a solid pick. I can see why it's fun. I enjoyed it. I didn't love it, but we also only played it two players so far, and I think just being able to sit down and do a five-player game of this and it be that quick must be part of the appeal. Oh, you know? I, I do love it. Um, uh, this is actually the biggest surprise for me. I didn't know this game was in Germany and very popular. It's a Kickstarter. That's this true. Is a rare, I, this is one of the first. It's not probably the first, because I think Kickstarters have shown up before in this award, but it's one of the first. Oh, that's an interesting oh, point. Oh, that's cool. All right. Well, next up, next game is Challengers. This is a game that... Um, Tom and I gave a positive review to, and, and Roy gave a two. It's an eight for me. Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. Uh, and I actually considered going higher that, but... No. A divided game, to say the least. This is a... This is basically an auto-battler card game where you can, each turn, put two cards into a little deck of cards, and then you take that deck of cards and you duel against somebody else's. This is kind of, to me, it seems like they were trying to recreate a Magic the Gathering tournament in a single board game, almost. Yes. And so by doing, in order to do so in a timely manner, you have up to eight people battling in four different little spots. You have to stand up, move around the table. But then they took away pretty much all of the um, choices of how to play when you go to the play part of it. You just flip over cards. Kind of like war, you flip cards. There's a and, few moments of the cards you can add in your deck that have choices. Yeah, but it's really, your choices are which cards you add to your deck, do you pull cards out of your deck, and now it's auto-battler. Just flip over cards against each other and someone wins. You know what it made me think of? It made me think of someone like going into Excel or going into like some sort of computer programming thing and being like, I'm going to run trials to see if this game is balanced. And then they're like having so much fun seeing if the game is balanced that they're like, what if we just made a game? That was just doing this. <laughs> like, that's what it feels like. Yes. <laughs> so, this is a weird year for the Kenner Spiel because I think the three different games, we have a very light game, a heavier game, and then a very heavy game with the, the last one we're going to talk about. This one's light. I think this could have been in the Spiel. I really do. Yeah. I think it's the setup that makes it not light. The setup, though, is just like make decks of one, two, and three. Yeah, but you have you have six in this box. You have six different factions that you can play with. Play with five of them. Sort each of them into A, B, and C. Shuffle them. Just don't sort them. Just play with all of them. Um, now that would be a prettier problem when Challengers Two comes out with more factions. Yeah, the cleanup I was a bear. Yes. This is my least favorite of the three, but that's not a negative against it. Is is my favorite. This is also the one I think will win. Maybe plan on them, but I think this one went because I think this fits that German dynamic of family game, the funniness of, okay, now I'm going to play against Chris. So let's stand up. Now I'm going to go over and play Wendy. And honestly, I read someone said this, and I cannot get it out of my head. How similar is this to Quacks of Quellingberg? They're almost the same thing. In Quacks of Quellingberg, hmm. you buy tiles that you throw into a bag. You then pull those tiles out. You don't pick how they come out until you decide to stop. In Challengers, you pick from two different sets of cards and build a deck. You then play that deck out against somebody else. There's, I mean, there's a lot of similarities. At least in Quacks, you have that choice. Like, you have that push-your-luck choice. This one, you're literally just, like, playing till it's done. No, I so agree that yeah. there's a little bit more choice in Quacks, but there's not much more. Yeah. Literally, your only choice is, I am done. And then, but yeah. the buying, yeah. you only can buy one or two chips. In this one, your choices start right away. You technically have more choices in this one about the building. That's true. Mm. I don't, I think this is a blast. You have to be in that mindset to go in, but it is just, it's super entertaining. My biggest complaint about this is I don't want to play with eight people because I don't want to have to keep standing up and walking around a table. But I also don't want to play with an odd number of people necessarily, because then someone has to play against the robot deck. Yeah, robot's yeah. fine, but yeah, you're right. It works better with even. But I, 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 I think this will win, but I don't feel as strongly about this one. I feel like it's yeah. incredibly okay, and I feel like the setup and the takedown is really convoluted. But 
it's just a very okay game to me. But I, I agree with you that I could see that this fits their bill better. But I, but I feel like it should have been in the in the more family lighter category. And then I then I would almost say like yeah I think this one should win the spiel. Well then it would have gone against Dorf Romantic and I would say well I still think Dorf Romantic would have beat it. But yes. Yeah exactly yeah yeah. So no I I like this one I have fun with it. It's a silly mindset but. It feels odd in this grouping of games because it does stand out so, so much so. But also, I could see it being, it, I see that it's very popular. All right, the last game here for the Kenner Spiel is my personal favorite of the three. It is a, um, it's Iki, which actually came out many years ago, or six years ago at this point, but just came out in German last year, which is why they have it here. This is a fairly heavy game in which you are moving a, a Japanese shopper around in this rondelle of sorts, a circle, and when you land on different things, you are buying and selling, there's an economy going on trying to get points. But you're building shops and you are stopping at your own shops or at other people's shops, and then those shops, the people who work at those shops, are improving in their value and their experience. And there is a lot going on in this game, however, it comes with Maybe the best player aids I've ever seen in any game ever. They're on the board. They're in front of you. Like, if you're like, oh, I don't know what this does, it, like, shows you right there. I'm very impressed. All the steps. There's a lot of steps in the game, but there's a token that moves through the steps. The, I don't know. I, I like how all that works together. It's, like I said, there's so much going on in this. You're looking for different sets of shops, and some shops count as two. I'm kind of, my mind's blown that this is even on the list. You think it's that it's, involved of a game? I don't. And when people watch this, I'm not saying it's a Vitello Serta game or a Squatter oh, no. game. It's not there. But it definitely is not a light game by any means. There's a lot going on. You have to stop every turn and look at all the cards that are out there that you can buy, the different shopkeepers that you can get in. Because Kenner Spiel doesn't just mean... Heavy game. Yeah, it still it's, is... A game you could play as a family. If your if your family's into games, the the connoisseur game of the year is, is what it kind of translates to. And so there have been some more involved games, Terraforming Mars, uh, Pandemic Legacy. I remember Dominion. Dom well, no, that wasn't Kenner. That was pre-Kenner Spiel. Yeah, and that, it it's, it's weird because the, the the heaviness changes from year yeah. to year. Yeah. I'm just saying this one is sounds more complex than the other two, um, but I also love this game. I I think I will really like this at more player count, but at two, there's not enough positive interaction for me. Like, there's, like, like the Chris Walt doesn't use your stores as much as you'd want him to? Yeah, we played oh, a whole yeah. game where Chris never used... Or he used mine, but I didn't ever use his like kind of thing. Like a jerk. And the fire... So in this game, you're trying to move up this fire track to prevent your stores from catching on fire or your people or whatever. But in a two-player game, once someone is far enough in the lead, the other person's never catching up. And so they'll just, the first player is less interesting, I think, in a two player game. You were stuck being second player, always having way worse options to pick between the movement, right? Because mm -hmm. you have to pick a certain number of movement on the rondelle. And when you just kept getting shorted out of like the logical, you're like, oh, I want to move two or three steps. You put out a blocker piece in two players, oh, cover up the two. Guess what? I'm going to go three steps. So I just think so. this is a game that I think I will really enjoy at a higher player count. Just yeah. my particular. And I think the award is based player on higher experience. player counts. Often I they have put two yeah. player games in the past, but I don't think this will win. In fact, this is the the, the twenty to one odds for me. But I also like it a lot. But it's good I notoriety like it. for it. Yeah. yeah so. Have you played it with more than two? Yes. Yeah. yeah I, I I love it. I played it three and four players. I think. So you thought it was very much not as good at two. Absolutely. I had, I had so little reason to go to Wendy's shop and upgrade her workers, and that's to me the best part of the game. I agree. That, that tension of, do I go here? This is great for me. I'm helping Tom a bit, but it's really good for me, so I'll do it. And I, th I think this is a great game, very involved. I would love to see it win, because I think that this is something I would I would love to see get more notoriety. I'm glad at least it's nominated. I think that that alone should hopefully put this on more people's radar. Mm -hmm. That's eeky. All right. So, yeah, of my predictions, I, th I think I'm going to predict Planet Unknown to win the Kenner. Oh, good. I don't think we should have the same predictions. That way someone's mm. going to win the game. There you go. That's interesting. Kenner. Yeah, I think I would go with Planet Unknown as well. I think that simultaneous action selection is... Okay, and you're yeah. saying challengers. I'm gonna say not only will challengers win, it will be in a few years still support it more than Dorf Romantic. 
Oh, interesting. I think that Challengers mm. will probably be the most successful game to They've come out of this bunch. already announced Challengers too, so I have a, I mean, it's a little bit of a leg start there. Very right. expandable. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. yeah. I think Iki might be the least likely to win of, of any of the games here, but yeah, I don't know. It'll but they're great. all, it's worth checking out all six of the games, yeah. I think. I think so. All right. Uh, did you have a prediction on, on Spiel? I forget. Ooh, on Spiel. Um, probably fun facts, even though it's not, it wouldn't be my pick. But. You think Overdorf Romantic? Yeah, I think that party game. Good, we all have different picks now. Who will win? Well, I, well, unfortunately, you and I both said Dorf Romantic. No, but we have And we both two said Planet Unknown. Okay, there you go. So there's, there's differences. Oh, okay. Watch this be completely wrong. <laughs> it's going to be Iki it's and... It's and London, so there you go. Yeah, comment below your thoughts on the spiel this year, what you want to see win, what you would personally vote mm. for, what you think will win, those types of things. But uh, thanks for coming out to the Dice Tower, checking out this video. Until next time, my name is Chris Yee. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Tom Vassell. Have yourselves a great day. Batteries are all good. There's two bars on mic number one, but... Wah, 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 wah.